In recent decades, human migration has grown across the world as millions of people leave their homes and settle in new regions around the globe. Understanding these patterns will be crucial to global stability in the decades to come. Joining me today is Dr. Joel Cohen of Rockefeller University. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, Dr. Cohen, you've developed a new mathematical model that uh, will help predict some of these migration patterns. Uh, what got you interested in this research? Most of my scientific career has been devoted to developing new mathematical, statistical, and computational tools to understand populations, human and non-human. Because I had worked on techniques of population projection, in 2003, the United Nations Population Division invited me to a meeting on long-term population projections. And I listened to the excellent demographers from the UN Population Division and afterwards realized that another approach from the one they had been using might solve some of the problems and improve some of the techniques that they have developed. Hmm, interesting. So how, how did you develop your model? Well, it seemed obvious to me and later I found out that I was not the first person to think this, that the number of migrants from country A to country B has to depend on the number of people in country A and the number of people in country B. But I wasn't smart enough a priori to know how it would depend on those numbers of people. So I had to go get some data. And I was lucky enough to collaborate with Dr. Marta Roig, a Spanish demographer who's on the staff of the Population Division. And we organized the UN's data in a new way and analyzed these data in terms of a very well-known statistical technique called the General Linear Model. And over a number of years, we discussed this work with people at the UN and elsewhere. And listening to the suggestions, we added variables we started with the populations of the sending and receiving countries, and then we added things like the area of the sending country, the re area of the receiving country, the distance between their capitals, uh, whether it was possible to walk from one country to another, and other geographic and demographic variables. I later learned that uh, several of our variables are included in a model that's called a gravity model, which is a very well-known class of models in the social sciences and geography. But apparently, uh, gravity models and the general linear model have not been combined with real data on international migration as we combine them. Oh, interesting. So, so what makes this model different than exactly from previous models? Well, Everybody knows that international migration is a very complicated process. It depends on economic, political, environmental, cultural, anthropological factors. Unfortunately, all these complex factors are more difficult to project into the future than basic demographic factors like births and deaths. So I tried to develop an approach that was as simple as possible by focusing only on the demographic factors that are easy to project and on geographic factors that change not at all or very little over time. So what realism we lose by the simplicity of this approach is more than compensated for by the predictive power that we gain. To the best of my knowledge, our model, though it's very far from perfect, accounts for more of the variation in the numbers of migrants from one country to another in any year than any other published model. Ooh, fascinating. Uh, now, your previous research is focused on epidemiology. Um, are there any components of this population model that could be used in uh, tracking epidemics, for example? That's really an interesting question, and I can only answer it by speculating a little bit, if you'll permit me to speculate. Sure. Uh, I would guess that the answer to your question might be yes, it could be useful. Um, for example, if our model usefully describes how people migrate from country to country, and if migration is a factor in the spread of some transmissible disease, then a model or models like the one that we've developed might contribute to understanding how that transmissible disease could be carried around the world. But remember that 
our model and the data we analyzed describe migrants, not tourists, not business travelers. So for highly infectious diseases that are quickly transmitted, other models and data may be more appropriate. I see. Uh, so what's next for this research? Are, are there any other aspects of population modeling that you'd like to explore? Of course. In science, every answer raises more questions. For example, our model in its present form doesn't deal properly with the age structure of migrants. It doesn't take account of how the age distributions of the sending and receiving countries affect the number of migrants from origin to destination. I'm also very interested in the mathematical or theoretical questions about the long run or asymptotic behavior of the demographic model in which our general linear model, model is embedded. And most importantly, the value of our work rests on the quality of the data that we used. There's a tremendous need to improve the quality of data on the number of migrants. Different countries use different definitions of who is a migrant. These differences make it more difficult to model the data in a consistent way. So I would say that there is plenty of work waiting to be done by bright young people who like either empirical or theoretical work or both. And there's plenty of work left to do for national and international statistical agencies. Dr. Cohen, thank you for joining us today. It's been my pleasure. And that's Dr. Joel Cohen of Rockefeller University and of Columbia University talking to us today about his population migration modeling. Thank <laughs> you.